The object freeze and glow effect is great for highlighting products if you're making a video for a client, or even just to draw attention to something specific in one of your videos. The effect is not that difficult to pull off, but there are a couple of different steps, so I'm going to break it down for you step by step. Step one is to prepare your footage. I've got this clip here, which is from Motion Array, who just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video, but more about Motion Array in just a bit. This clip was shot in slow motion, so I want to speed up the beginning of the shot so that it ramps into slow motion during the kickflip, and then it'll speed back up again at the end. To do that, I'll just scrub to the point where the board goes into the air somewhere around there, and I'll hit Shift B to make a speed edit. I'll scrub forward because I want all of this in slow motion, and right about here, as he's about to land on the board again, I'll hit Shift B to create a second speed edit. So this middle part will keep in slow motion, and the part before and after will speed up. I'll just speed that up to about four times. That should be about normal speed. I'll do that on both sides. And this is what the shot looks like now. You might not need to do this, depending on the type of footage you've got. But if you need to do any speed ramping, it's important to do that first before we go ahead with the following steps. Step two is to find the freeze frame point. I'll scrub through here to see where I want the freeze frame to take place. I want it to happen somewhere around here where the full board is in view. Something like that looks good. And then I'm going to hit Shift H to create a hold frame. And I'm going to just drag this out until I have a shot that's about three seconds. I can check that again using the range tool and it's a little more than three seconds, that's perfect. If you want to hide this retiming bar at the top here, you can just select the clip and hit Command R. Step three is to separate the object from the background. To do that, I'm going to hold down Alt and click and drag the clip on top of itself to create a copy. And then I'm going to add the draw mask effect to this top clip. I'll zoom into my viewer over here and I'll just draw a mask around the skateboard. Your mask doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but the more time you spend creating your mask, the better the effect will look. I'll set my viewer back to fit the window here. And then if I hide this bottom clip using the shortcut V, you can see that I've cut the skateboard out from the scene. Step four is to create a glow effect. To do that, I'll hold down Alt and duplicate the skateboard layer, and then I'll hit V to hide the top layer. On this layer of the skateboard here, I'll hit Command-6 to open up my color properties, and then I'm going to add a color board correction. I'll head over to Exposure, and I'll boost the global slider all the way to the top. I'll go to Saturation, boost the global slider all the way to the top, and then on color, I'll grab my global slider and I'll select a color here. Somewhere around here should do, I want something nice and red. That looks pretty cool. Then I need to go ahead and add a Gaussian blur effect to this layer, which will create this glow around the skateboard. I'll enable this top layer again by hitting V, and then on this glow layer, I need to bring the glow in so it's not there throughout the whole shot. So I'll hit Command R to bring up my retime properties, and I'm going to trim this for the duration of the hold frame. So I'll go to the beginning of the hold frame and I'll hit Alt and the left square bracket, and I'll go to the end and I'll hit Alt and the right square bracket. Now this glow effect is only applied on the freeze frame. I'm going to add a cross dissolve to bring it in, so I'll hit Command T with the clip selected, and then I'm going to change the duration of both of these crossfades by selecting them, hitting Control D, typing four frames, and enter. The effect is starting to come together, and this is what it looks like right now. Step five is to add movement. I'm going to do that using an adjustment layer. If you don't already have one, I'll put a free link in the description down below so that you can download one. But basically, you'll just drag and drop this adjustment layer on top of the clip and retime it to fit. Then you'll go to the beginning of the hold frame and use the left arrow key to go back two frames. Then with the adjustment layer selected, I'll set a keyframe on the scale, rotation, and position of this clip. And then I'll go ahead and move forward using the right arrow key, one, two, three, four frames. And then I'll go ahead and adjust the rotation. Let's rotate it a little bit like that, scale it up to 150, and I'll adjust the position. Maybe we'll rotate it a little less, something like that. And I'll just refine the position, maybe put it somewhere like that. I'm leaving some negative space here because I do also want to add a title. Then I'll go to the end of the hold frame. I'll move backwards one, two frames and I'll set new keyframes here again for scale, position and rotation. I want these to stay the same because I want this to look exactly the same over the hold frame. And then I'll move forward four frames again, one, two, three, four. 
and I'll set all of these values back to the default. So all of these back to zero and the scale back to 100. If you'd like to see your video animation properties, you can hit Control V. And in this case, I would set the keyframes on the position parameter from smooth to linear. I've spoken about this before, but basically the scale keyframes don't ease in and out, whereas the position ones do. And sometimes that can look a little weird. So if your shot looks a little bit odd when the position moves, change all of these to linear by simply right clicking on it and going from smooth to linear. And this is what the effect looks like so far. It looks cool, but we do need to add some motion blur. Again, these are free adjustment layers, so I'll link to those down below, but I'll grab this moderate motion blur and I'm just going to add it over the duration of my keyframes. So I'll hit Alt and the right square bracket to trim it over here, and then I'll hit Alt and I'll just copy that to my next set of keyframes. If I play that back, you'll see that we now have some really smooth motion blur to enhance this effect. Step six is to add elements to the background. This will just separate your subject from the background even more. And to do this, we're going to use an asset from Motion Array. If you haven't already heard of Motion Array, it's an all-in-one marketplace for video creators that has thousands of assets, including stock footage, Final Cut Pro templates, Final Cut Pro transitions, photos, royalty-free music, and even sound effects. The best part is that you get unlimited downloads, so you can sign up for a month or a year subscription and you have access to everything they have and you can use any of the assets in as many projects as you like. And the license covers everything from YouTube videos to feature films. It only costs $29.99 per month or $20.83 per month if you sign up for the annual plan. And at that price, you get access to a true one-stop shop for all your post-production needs. If you'd like to try it out, you can sign up for a free account. You'll get limited access to the assets, but there are still hundreds of free assets that you can use. The footage, music, titles, and overlays in this video are all from Motion Array. So if you'd like to try Motion Array for yourself, I'll leave a link down below for you. So let's go ahead and find an overlay to use on the background. I think a sort of film scratch kind of effect would work well. So let's just search for a film scratch effect and see what we've got. That's a bit too much for what I want. That's quite cool. I think this film scratch actually would look really nice. So I'll just hit download and I'll drop it into Final Cut. I've got this film scratch effect in Final Cut now. So I'm just going to trim it somewhere around here. That's where I'd like it to start. And I'm going to drop that underneath this glow effect that I've created. And using Alt and the right square bracket to trim it, I'm going to trim this to the same duration as my hold frame. I'll hit Command G to put it in a group, and this is necessary because then I can simply Alt drag to copy these transitions. Then I'm going to change the blend mode on this. Let's have a look. I think something like overlay would work quite well. And then lastly, I'm going to add a title in here, but I'd like to use something new, something I've never used before. So let's go back to Motion Array and search for a title. I'll head over to Templates and I'll select Final Cut Pro. I'm looking for titles and I'm going to search for grunge. Let's have a look at this. That's pretty cool. That's also pretty cool. Let's go ahead with these Bronx titles. I'm going to download that and add that to Final Cut. To install the title templates, you simply go over to your movies folder, motion templates, titles, and you drop the folder in there and you restart Final Cut. Once the titles are installed, I'll grab one of these options. Let's go with reveal and I'll drop that on top of the hold frame and retime it to fit. I'll go in here and change the properties. Let's call this custom boards. I don't know what's a good name for a skateboard company. You guys let me know in the comments down below. And then I'll go ahead and adjust the width of this and the height a little bit, and I'll reposition it somewhere over here, maybe rotate it a little bit more, and there we go. Lastly, add some sound effects, and this is the final object freeze and glow effect. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one.